take a look at the wild beetle I have in here. A certain sort of predatory beetle that I found out in the woods here in Oregon. He's been making a very good pet. It was ID'd as a Lamas ground beetle, L-A-M-A-S, if I remember correctly. Which, thank you, Peter, at Bugs in Cyberspace for that ID, because let me tell you, asking Google about a black beetle was pretty fruitless. There's a lot of black beetles, but this one's a really cool one. Hey, buddy. Are you... He mostly pretends he's not until he does. There he goes. Hi. So he's got those predatory jaws. Surprisingly thick build. Here we go. Hey, bud. So really interesting. Doesn't seem to have any extreme defense odors that he uses very often. I haven't really given him the a reason to. But if you haven't already, go check out the Exotic Pet Collective, because I mention really enjoying just going out into your environment and seeing what's out there to keep in the hobby and really getting to know your local critters. And if you get sick of having them, you just put them back where you found them. No harm, no foul. This works well with mantises and beetles. Beetles are pretty hard in the hobby because you usually get larvae and you have to have that perfect substrate to raise them in. There's a few species that are easier and harder, of course. My goodness, you're a quick one. There. But yeah, so that's a llamas beetle. Found him in a little termite den out in the woods. And he's been doing really well in captivity. But except when he wants to just take off forever. Put him back in his spot. He's doing... Doesn't seem to be out and about very often. He likes to stay hidden, but he's been eating his mealworm pupa. And like I said, he handles pretty well. No biting, no everything just running. Oh, he's so out of focus. Here, buddy. Okay. He hasn't been able to climb at all, so I have him in this open top container. I just make sure to mist it once in a while. So I've just been keeping him in here with some roly polies and some mesh paths to walk up and over and around, have a little bit more walking structures. He's been doing great. So that's the first outdoor species I brought in for the winter. Let's take a look at some of the other critters. Okay, and try to be quick and gentle with this one because she's fragile and her setup is as well. But we also have a striped garden spider. Hey, pretty girl. There we go. So we have a striped garden spider in here, a silverish girl. Let's see if I can... Yeah, she's beautiful. Looks like she's made out of silver dust. But the frosts were coming, so I knew she wasn't going to last long, so I'm just seeing how long she'll last in captivity. I was hoping she was gravid and would lay eggs, but she's mostly just been hanging out. Making a really beautiful web. Very fun spider. I don't I don't have very many of the true spiders, so this is one of those. I can put all the species names in the description. But yeah, I highly recommend this as a true spider, a very gentle species. Seems to eat fruit flies up pretty well. Seems intimidated by any larger flies. Drinks up dew off the web. Very interesting. So that's species number two. And this little girl's really on her last legs. She's old for her species. She's lived a lot longer into, there were a bunch of frosts already this year, so she's gotten a good extra few months of life and laid these beautiful Uthaka, huge Uthaka. But yeah, so this is a European mantis. One of the smaller, more gentle species of mantises. You don't have to worry about losing your hummingbirds to these guys. And that's one of her egg sacs, so we'll have babies from her next year. 
I found a beautiful male in the fields because I got her at sub-adult or a little younger and then raised her up inside. There are lots of them in the field, so I decided to take one home. Beautiful girl. So there's the European mantis as well. And those are three species I've brought in over the winter to help through those last couple months and see if we can get any babies to re-release outside in our local area. This isn't a native mantis, but it is a highly introduced species to the point that, you know, you buy them at garden centers, you'll either get these or the big Chinese species. So. Awesome. Go take a look outside, see what you guys have found. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's a critter you've kept for yourself in the past. I've had moths and a few other things I detail. There's a new that exotic pet collective. Go check that out next and see me chit chat about all the critters. I actually put my face on camera. You don't see that very much. And also there are some new stickers available. Some of them are limited time. I'm doing a forever pet series so I did some very crisp mantis species. There's some magnets available. Some black disc stickers. There's the there's a couple more designs of the orchid coming in. More spiny, my beautiful Ambulopygi. Let me know if you're interested in any stickers for the holiday season. And we also have buttons. I'm not sure if I can send buttons in envelopes. So I'm not sure what the shipping will have to be on the buttons, but woo! Super cool stuff! Hit up that comment section and let me know what critters you've kept in the past. And don't forget to please the algorithm, like, and subscribe. And check out some of the other ambassadors. Thanks so much.